Right, from all of that, join now by the South African Medical Association Chairperson, Dr. Mvuisi Mzuka. Dr. Mzuka, good to have you, and thank you very much for your time. Is it a poor training of security issue? Is it a capacity issue? Uh, is, is, is there something else that is going on? Because th this issue of, of Limpopo clinics coming under the spotlight because of uh, a challenge either there around service, is not the first time that it's happening. Uh, good evening to you, Tavo, and to your viewers, and really thank you for uh, uh, inviting me to your program. Uh, you are quite right, it's not happening for the first time, and it's really disappointing that you know, in this eight, day and age we still have uh, in, in instances where patients are denied access, you know, with emergency conditions, access to healthcare facilities, uh, where we think that, uh, you know, uh, he, 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 people should now be aware of the constitution of the country, section 27, subsection 3, telling us that no one may, may be denied uh, access, you know, especially when they have an emergency condition. So uh, I would blame it, one, to, you know, the, the security companies that are, are, are providing services for the state, but also I would blame the, the Department of Health it means uh, they are not proactive in, in terms of demanding the service that is needed for the communities that are, 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 they are supposed to be protecting. So this is one case where we see that there are loopholes in the department. Uh, people cannot be dying at the gates of an institution where they are denied because uh, a security guard is standing there and telling them you can't get in because there's load shedding. Because as far as, uh, as we know, Load shedding is not an excuse. Uh, people can still go in and be stabilized inside, though uh, the, the, their, their assistance may be very limited because you, you can imagine working in an environment where there's no electricity. So it's, a, it's a very disappointing and really saddening to, to hear such news. And uh, really our condolences to the uh, 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 family of the loved one. For all we know, and, 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 and here's where it gets a little bit murky, if whether or not the, the security company is being scapegoated here, surely this would not have been the only patient that would have been turned away. It just so happened that this one, uh, the, the matter ended fatally. It could have been a whole number of other patients that would have been turned away at the gate by this security guard. Now, in, in a hospital situation, would a security guard be at liberty to make such a call on his own unless it is instructed to him by somebody in authority? As far as uh, the healthcare system works, uh, security guards are not supposed to be uh, triaging patients, in other words, uh, prioritizing patients for service. It is a duty of healthcare workers to be prioritizing or uh, triaging uh, patients so that they can identify who must be seen immediately and who can wait. So in this case, security officers are not supposed to be doing that. Uh, it's very strange that uh, you can find a security officer telling a person to, to go away without informing the healthcare workers inside. Um, uh, the other thing, it, it, it boils back to what I was saying, to say that the department really needs to monitor this and be proactive. We can't be uh, having MECs who are now talking in the media without doing the proper work of actually attending to the, the issues on the ground. Because we can't be told in South Africa that somebody died at the gate because, it, uh, you know, uh, a security guard just thought, you know, you can't get in. So it, it's something that must be, uh, must be cleared. It must never happen in this country. And it, like you, you were saying earlier on, there are many, we are, we are sure that there are many patients who have turned away because uh, of these excuses. And, you know, even at times you find that, you know, though we have healthcare workers who are really working so hard and, you know, working to save lives in the, in the facilities, but we do have pockets of those, you know, that need retraining and must be monitored closely by the department in terms of rendering services to the state, to, the, to, to the communities. I suppose the other question that this brings is, is, is the whole impact of load shedding on, on the health 
uh, care services in the country and whether or not indeed in, in now what one would say we've been at this uh, at least for the last four to five years if we have been able to standardize how, how we operate and how we support and assist healthcare facilities during times of load shedding. You, you will record, you recall that uh, we are on record, you know, uh, complaining and even uh, urging government to say exempt healthcare facilities from load shedding. And we, 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 we made our case clear because we said it is going to impact negatively on the functioning of the staff, but also it has a, a, a possibility of killing patients, you know. And this is exactly what we are seeing now where you find that, you know, this load shedding issue is impacting on, on people's lives directly. But unfortunately, it does not affect the relatives uh, of, uh, of ministers. It does not uh, affect uh, uh, children of, of, of ministers. It does not uh, affect, uh, you know, those uh, children of higher ranking officials or relatives because, you know, they can be taken good care of by the private sector. So we think that, uh, honestly, it's something uh, drastic needs to happen because Tabo, it means there is no uh, standard operating procedures that are known by every healthcare worker in that institution. Because if there was such a, a standard operating procedure, that security guard would have known that you can't deny this patient access, even if there is load shedding. Because load shedding, like you said, is not you know, for, uh, coming for the first time. We've lived with load shedding for a, a long time. We are sure that there should be plans in place to prevent such uh, 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 occurrences, you know, uh, 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 in the workplace. Well, certainly, I mean, if that particular hospital is not, would that not be in contempt of a court ruling? Because there was a court ruling on this matter of, on, on clinics, schools, police stations that should have been exempted from experiencing uh, load shedding. You will know that uh, this, uh, these people, they, they, they went to defend what they should not be defending. They went to court to appeal. They said, no, they don't have capacity. Uh, the only capacity that they have is to protect uh, ministers. You know, they must have electricity at the cost of poor patients. And they were running uh, like headless chickens, going uh, to, to communities, seeking a uh, vote to be voted by communities, when actually... Communities are dying because of uh, their carelessness and, uh, you know, the way they are handling, you know, healthcare is, is really uh, uh, astonishing. So I believe that, you know, as far as this case is concerned, you know, it, it should not just be a, a, a media statement and, and that is that there should be a report. Actually, there should be accountability on this matter. You know, the MEC accounting, you know, to the country, but also the Department of Health should be actually attending to this matter because patients are dying on the ground, you know, and we see these uh, instances where it's just, you know, uh, there's a, just a, a, a peer exercise in the media and it ends there. But there should be accountability because we need to know that healthcare is sacrosanct. Uh, nobody should be playing around healthcare. It's a question of accountability, I suppose, next. Uh, yes, of course, a life has been lost, and a life would never be replaced. And condolences to the family. It, it, it's rather a sad moment, but th there needs to be a degree of accountability for what would have happened here. Yes, uh, in an institution, there is an accounting officer. Uh, there should be a proper report that is uh, uh, made known to the public as well so that we know how these people are dealing with these matters. But also, Tabo, just to alert communities and South Africans, no institution, including private hospitals or private clinics, can deny a patient who comes with an emergency. If you've got an emergency, you get close, you go to your, uh, uh, the closest uh, institution, whether it's private or not, uh, that private institution must uh, stabilize you and send you to a, a, a state institution. But they can't say, no, you don't have medical aid, you don't have money, we can't assist you. It does not exist. It's unconstitutional. Indeed.
Dr. Moise Mzuka, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much Al, for speaking to us tonight. That's the chairperson of the South African Medical Association there, Dr. Mvuyi Mzuka. patient died in front of the Limpopo Clinic uh, after security guard denied him access due to what they say is load shedding. The department, of course, has since come out to say uh, that particular facility operates even during uh, load shedding. A report is being compiled to exactly determine what could be at the bottom of this.